in 1937, the, although the two parties, uh, these Krishak Pranja Party and Muslim League, they joined the government together with Fazlul Haq as chief minister. Muslim League was an all India party and Muslim League leaders had a lot more political acumen. So by and by they swallowed, practically swallowed Fazlul Haq. And what happened is that they started bringing in legislations which were totally inimical to Hindus, which would deprive Hindus of their uh, regular employment, particularly government employment. I just give you one example that in the government, the, this Muslim League, Prajapati, this coalition, they ruled that there would be reservation for Muslims. To what extent? To the extent of 55 to 45. This was still understandable. It's not supportable, but understandable. But what was much worse was that because the Muslims had been backward, which was not the fault of Hindus, because the Muslims had been backward and their representation was much below 55, this government said that we must bring it up to 55. And until we bring it up to 55, no Hindu would be given employment. And uh, in a presidency college, government college in Scown University, which is the premier college in West Bengal, in presidency college, a post had fallen vacant, a post of professor. The cabinet clearly gave it to, the, to a Muslim who had a third class degree even though they were Hindus with first class degrees available. This was the situation. The government was entirely Muslim League. By that time, uh, this Fadrul Haq's Krishak Praja Party had almost folded up and it had merged into the Muslim League. So that the entire, Mus entire Muslim support of the state, that is 55% of the population went to Muslim League. Well, it went that way. And uh, Dr. Shyam Prasad Mukherjee carried on. Then in 1943-44, it went on like that. Meanwhile, the war was raging. And there were a lot of draconian legislations which were drawn up under the government of India rules. That kind of thing went on. Finally, in 1945, something very funny happened. This is something I got from an ex-police commissioner of Calcutta. He, was a, he is a relation of mine, he's dead now. His father was a judicial officer. That is, his father was a member of the district judiciary, the West Bengal judiciary. Possibly at that time, he was a district judge or something. Now, this gentleman, his name is Nirupam Som, he told me that at that time, the officers of Calcutta police, they were mostly Bengali Hindus. This governor, Harbat, Harbat had by that time been replaced by another governor. I think in succession, there were two or three governors, but the running of the state was in the hands of the ICS officers. So when this governor, when this, uh, in around 1945, there was an officer by the name of Niaz Muhammad Khan, who eventually became the cabinet secretary of Pakistan. This Niaz Muhammad Khan, he decided, or he was told by Jinnah, because he was very much under the influence of Jinnah in spite of having been a civil servant. He was instructed by Jinnah to change the composition of the Calcutta police and get the officers replaced by Muslim officers. So that is what he did. He even went all the way to Punjab, undivided Punjab and further on to Northwest Frontier Province, what is known as Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in uh, Pakistan now. And from there, he got Pathans, Punjabi Muslims, to come and work for the Calcutta police. And he transferred all the Bengali officers, Bengali Hindu officers of the police stations to a headquarters where they would really be doing the job of clerks, not much more. And 
the real power was being wielded by these officers who were in the respective police stations, thanas. Why did they do it? Because I think a lot of people think it's an educated guess that a number of uh, that uh, Jinnah had already decided that Calcutta was going to be his next theater of action because Bengal was one province which was ruled by the Muslim League, practically by the Muslim League, because as I said, the party that the Krishak Praja party had already been folded up. Then he started getting these Punjabi police and uh, Northeast Front, Northwest Frontier, this Pathan police, getting them to work in the Thanas. And this was the apparently the intention. Then Jinnah said in the same breath that we are going to resort to direct action. He did not clarify what direct action was going to be. This direct action was to be done in Calcutta because the province of Bengal was under the Muslim League. And this direct action, we all know, it was known as the Great Calcutta Killings. And this direct action resulted in deaths of estimated 5,000 to 30,000. Nobody knows the exact figure. But 5,000 to 30,000, both Hindus and Muslims were killed in Calcutta between the dates of 16th and 20th of August, 1946. Unimaginable. The roads of Calcutta ran, run with, ran red with blood. And this was all the doing of this uh, Sarwardi, who was at that time the chief minister of undivided Bengal. And before that, of course, the moving spirit was Nehru, who had resigned from his province from his, uh, from the Congress's promise of uh, accepting the cabinet mission plan. So that was that, and nothing could be done. Nehru and Gandhi did not choose to come to Calcutta at that time, because if they came, they would be face to face with certain unpleasant things, which Gandhi did not want to face, Nehru did not want to face, so that was that. Now, during the Noakhali Khanage, I'll just show, tell you to what extent these Hindus were, these uh, Congress leaders were biased. During the Noakhali Khanage, Gandhi visited Noakhali, Nehru went with him, didn't say one word. You will not be able to get one word out of Nehru said during the Noakhali, except at one point of time, he had told Ramano or Lohia that what does it matter? If, I, if this uh, place goes out of India, it doesn't matter. So that was his attitude. But when this um, uh, carnage started in Bihar as a retaliation of the Noakhali carnage, then Nehru advocated bombing. Nehru advocated bombing of Bihar, the Hindu villages, bombing the Hindu villages of Bihar to prevent this kind of rioting. 